Have you ever had one of those computers that you just kind of liked? This uh, old machine uh, started its life out as some very cheap HP Celeron based I think it was socket 478 Northwood or something of the likes uh, home PC which uh, I brought home many years ago the, this thing was probably scrapped in 2005 or so and uh, I used the case for a million different things and <laughs> Sometime in the process, I managed to cram this uh, full size ATX power supply into it, and uh, it's a very weird ASUS branded power supply. I've never seen anything like it before, I haven't figured out its OEM. But uh, the notable thing is, I can't figure out how to get this thing out again. <laughs> uh, if this thing fails, uh, I'm honestly stunned because I've spent probably two hours trying to coax this thing out of this case because you need to remove the optical drive and uh, somehow slide the power supply in there in order to get it out and uh, that's no easy feat I don't understand how it got there in the first place but uh, for the last uh, maybe five years uh, in 2008 uh, I actually bought uh, Safe of a power supply and uh, well, the drives and the optical drive and the fan. <laughs> I actually bought entirely new guts for this thing, uh, which uh, started out with an MSI motherboard, which was pretty similar to this. I think this is a G31 based board, that was one too. And uh, that board very promptly went up in smoke due to manufacturing defect. So I got uh, this board instead, which is uh, what is it? DirectX 10 HDMI. It's an ASUS P5 G4. Oh, it's a G41. P5 G41M, uh, which I bought for the sole uh, feature of it having internal HDMI, so that I would be able to uh, run without an external GPU and save some power. And the internal HDMI promptly never worked. And it's apparently a very common issue on G41 based boards, which I didn't know about at the time, so I was forced to use an external graphics card anyway. But uh, that issue aside, this thing has served me so incredibly faithfully with its generic ASUS branded power supply. It's got a big ASUS logo actually molded into the case on the other side, so it's never going to be seen again. But uh, this thing stood in standby for probably about four years until I uh, just had some more suitable spare parts to replace it with. And since then it served me as a test PC. And I tried to sell it once, uh, but uh, yeah, th this isn't the kind of case style which uh, is uh, with the times anymore. So that obviously failed even despite my very modest pricing. So it's stuck around, and I just replaced the CMOS battery in it. It had gone so bad that if you squeezed your fingers around it, the voltage would drop to 2 point something volts, and it had lost its CMOS memory. But this thing is about to go again. The original drives I used for this thing was uh, actually quite amusing. Uh, one of them was a 200 gigabyte IDE. Seagate drive that I got some time in middle school. I mean, I got a, I think I bought it for five euros uh, from a kid in school who probably stole it. And I then proceeded to drop it off my bike at speed, and somehow it kind of survived. And it stuck with me until I retired this thing back as a test machine. Now, but I've still got the drive lying around, it's got insane amounts of hours on it despite its very nasty scratch marks on the side. And the main, I used a dual IDE drive system in this thing, despite it only having one IDE connector, so I used a dual IDE ribbon cable. And I had a 40 gigabyte Hitachi drive that I ripped out of a printer, also Stone Age again, which was actually relatively fast. It would do about 80 megabytes per second. 
So it was a pretty okay system, and I used to the system drive just to stop VOS and stuff, and I extracted stuff, movies and so forth, onto the 200 gigabyte drive for local playback, since this thing only had wireless connectivity to my TV at the time. But that's been replaced with a, I think it's a 120 gigabyte Seagate random drive from the Stone Age, which is going to be seeing some new OSs and stuff. This thing is going to get a proper installation. It actually hasn't had a hard drive for a very long time since I've basically just tested graphics cards in it. So it's going to see a pretty nice little revival. I just wanted to make a little video about oh, oh yeah, this fan. This is from a 90s Compaq Disk Pro, which used to ship with 500 megahertz uh, passively cooled uh, Pentium 3 processors, and it's just got two wires. But if we have a look around the back, uh, it's actually a firmly controlled fan, so it runs very silently. And I believe it's an NMB brand, so it's just still a high quality. And that's been sitting there and running for ages. For the longest time it was actually flipped the other way around, sucking air in with an air filter around the back. And that worked great as well. Uh, memories. Yeah, this thing's going to see a proper reuse as a proper test machine, which is actually going to have a operating systems on the drive rather than just getting shoved in with a USB stick every once in a while. Yep, that'll be it. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. And just as a footnote, this thing started its life with a, a brand new uh, Intel Core 2 Duo E5200, which I promptly overclocked silly. But uh, that's since been somehow morphed into <laughs> an old T no E4300 at a more modest 1.8 gigahertz. I think that's even a 65 nanometer CPU from the Stone Age. But it's suitable for a test machine since I'll I'd be very unlikely to steal it for anything else.